Okay, now it is time to learn how to balance redox reactions. I have an equation here. Um, the first thing that you have to do is you have to identify if it is an acidic or basic solution because there will be two different methods for balancing a redox equation based on uh, the type of solution that it's in. This happens to be an acidic solution because you have both uh, nitric acid and sulfuric acid. So it is definitely an acidic solution. Um, I will do, I think, a separate video showing you how to do a basic solution. There's just kind of an added step at the end for a basic solution, but most of it's, about 90% of it's still the same. The first thing that you have to do is you have to write an ionic equation. Remembering way back to like when we did overall ionic equations, when you have to split up all of the, uh, all of the compounds that are either aqueous or icon iconic, ionic. Uh, and in this example, um, this is a formula equation. And then I have to write an ionic equation. So H2S doesn't change, but HNO3 changes. So I've got H plus NO3 minus. So if your acid changes, so I've got H plus, let's say two, plus SO4 minus two, and then the nitrogen dioxide and the water don't change, okay? So this is what we start with. Now, the first thing that you wanna do after that is you want to assign oxidation numbers to everything. Um, once you get used to actually balancing the equations, then you will start to learn uh, that there's certain types of elements that you can target and ignore others. Uh, I would say about 90% of the time, you can probably ignore oxygen and hydrogen because 90% of the time they're not changing and it's usually uh, elements other than that. So in this example, huh? uh, uh, in this example, sorry, I got a message that distracted me. In this example, I'm going to target nitrogen and sulfur because they're the only two elements in the entire equation that aren't hydrogen and oxygen, but because this is the first tutorial that I'm doing for redox balancing, I will assign oxidation numbers to everything just to show you what I mean. So going back to how you do uh, oxidation number assignment, so hydrogen is plus one, there are two of them, so that's plus two, which means this side's minus two, which means sulfur is minus two. This obviously plus one, because that's of the charge. For uh, nitrate, oxygen is minus two times three is minus six. The whole thing has to equal minus one because of the charge. So this has to be plus five. And since nitrogen has only one, that's also plus five. Again, hydrogen plus one. Even though there's a two in the front, that's just a balancing for the ions to match the formula up here. So, but each hydrogen is still plus one. Uh, oxygen minus two times four is minus eight. The whole thing has to equal the charge, which is minus two, which means S is plus six. Now you should already be having some kind of little light bulb going off in your head being like, wait a minute, but on the reactant side, sulfur was minus two, now all of a sudden it's plus six. Yeah, exactly, exactly. We'll come back to that in a second. Okay, um, nitrogen dioxide, nitrogen, Minus two times two is minus four. So that means that's plus four because there's no charge. Nitrogen is plus four. Uh, hydrogen here plus one, that's plus two, minus two, minus two. So if you have a look at all of your oxidation states, you look at hydrogen on the reactant side, it's plus one everywhere. Hydrogen on the reactant on the product side, plus one everywhere. Didn't change. Next, oxygen, minus two on the left hand side minus two on the right hand side, didn't change. Next, sulfur. Now, when you start doing these yourself, you will realize that there are several checkpoints where you can stop and analyze what you've done so far and you can actually kind of check your progress and things should make sense, it should fit. So, uh, redox happens together. 
because oxidation is a loss of electrons, that means that something in the equation is losing electrons. They don't just disappear and go off into the universe, into the cosmos. Uh, they have to be transferred to something else. That thing that they're transferred to is reduced. That's why it's a transfer of electrons, not just like one atom, of, there they go, bye. So they have to happen in pairs. If you have oxidation, you must have reduction. So your first checkpoint is to make sure that in your equation, you have identified one species which has been oxidized and one species that has been reduced. You have to have both. So we look at sulfur. Sulfur went from minus two to plus six. It increased in oxidation state. Why did it do that? Because it lost electrons. This is your oxidation reaction. Because that's oxidation, you're going to look for something in the equation which oxidation state has been reduced. Because you've identified the oxidation half reaction, you must now have a reduction reaction in which uh, something gains electrons, therefore the oxidation number is reduced. And sure enough, we have nitrogen, which goes from plus five to plus four. That's a reduction. So this is our first checkpoint and we have passed. Everything's okay. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to write our half reactions. Half reaction is just the reaction for oxidation and just the reaction for reduction. You have to separate the two, balance them individually, put them back together, add them up, and then recreate the formulas from your formula equation. That's why I said it's a long process. Being very attentive to the details here is going to save your life. So it will not pay at all to be sloppy here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write my, doesn't matter what order you put it in, I'll write my oxidation reaction first. So that's H2S, actually, uh, I should move that over because we're going to be adding things. Move that to the middle, go back. You can't have a white eraser, my dear. Okay. H2S, and then on the right hand side, because we are splitting the ion, not the atom, that would be bad. SO4 minus two. That is our oxidation half reaction. Underneath that, I'm going to write the reduction half reaction, which is NO3 minus and NO2, okay? Because we have to add them up at the end, so I might as well put one on top of the other. Okay, now I'm gonna go to green to show you how you actually go about balancing this. The first thing you want to do is make sure that the element that has changed oxidation number is balanced, okay? So that's for oxidation, that's sulfur, for reduction, that's nitrogen. For both of these reactions, those elements are already balanced. There's one sulfur on the reactant and product side, there's one nitrogen on the reactant and product side. So those are balanced. Now the next part is gonna come in, well, the next stage is in three parts. The first one is you're gonna balance sulfur. Ah, sorry, rewind. You're going to balance oxygen, then you're going to balance hydrogen, and then you're going to balance the charge, okay? The reason why we're balancing these separately. If you go back up to your ionic equation and you look at the change in oxidation states. If you look at sulfur, sulfur went from negative two to plus six. That means it lost eight electrons, right? Minus two to plus six is a loss of eight. Nitrogen went from plus five to plus four. That's only a gain of one electron. That doesn't make sense. That's why we're doing this. Okay, because you can't have sulfur losing eight electrons and nitrogen only gaining one. What happened to the other seven? So it's not balanced. That's what we're here for. That's what we do. Okay, so for oxidation, in order to balance oxygen, you're going to add water to the side that has less oxygen. 
for oxidation, the left hand side doesn't have any uh, doesn't have any oxygen, so we're going to add four four waters. That is a four, even though it looks like something else. Like I said, details. Okay. Now both sides have four oxygen atoms. Okay. Balance oxygen. Step two, balance hydrogen. Because it's an acidic solution, you're going to balance the hydrogen by adding hydrogen ions. So now you have to be really careful about your coefficients and your subscripts. There are four times two hydrogens here, so that's eight, plus these two. Don't forget those two. They would be lonely. So that's 10. We need to add 10 hydrogen ions to the right-hand side. So now oxygen and hydrogen are both balanced. The last step, step number three, balance charge. You do that by adding electrons. For the oxidation reaction, on the reactant side, the charge is zero. Water does not have a charge. Hydrogen sulfide does not have a charge. The right-hand side, again, paying attention to details, you have sulfate with a charge of minus two plus 10 positive hydrogen ions. So plus 10 minus two is plus eight. This side is plus eight, this side is zero. You're going to add electrons to the side that is more positive. So I have to add eight electrons. And it makes sense because go back to your original equation and look at the change in oxidation state. Sulfur went from minus two to plus six. That requires a loss of eight electrons. It makes sense. Okay, another checkpoint, makes sense. So the, oxyg uh, the oxidation, there we go, oxidation, I <laughs> brain freeze. Oxidation reaction is now balanced. Now we do the same exact thing with the reduction reaction. We're going to balance oxygen, balance hydrogen, balance charge. Okay, for the reactant side, we've got three oxygen atoms. The product side, we have two. So I have to add one water to the right-hand side. So now we have three oxygens on both sides. Then we have to add hydrogen to the left-hand side. So both sides have two hydrogen atoms, and now we have to balance the charge. Again, the right-hand side of the reduction equation has a charge of zero. The right-hand side, uh, the left, oh my God, I can't even tell my left and my right now. The left-hand side has a charge of plus two, minus one, that's plus one, plus one and zero. So we have to add one electron to the left-hand side. Again, it makes sense. There's another checkpoint. In your original equation, nitrogen went from plus five to plus four. That's a gain of one electron, which matches your half reaction. It makes sense. All right, we have to do one more thing before we add these two bad boys together because we cannot have this side losing eight electrons, but this side only gaining one. So we're going to multiply this whole equation times eight so that we can have an equal number of electrons being lost and gained. So I'm going to rewrite my reduction equation so I don't cover all this up. So I've got uh, right in white. So I've got a new redox, I'll call it redox 2.0. I've got eight electrons plus 16 hydrogen ions plus eight nitrate ions yields eight nitrogen dioxide plus eight water. What I am gonna do, because I don't need to have all of this extra stuff in the middle, is I am going to squiggle that out so that I know that I'm not gonna include that in my final equation. All right, time to add, but before we add, I see some things that we can cut here. I've got on this side, four waters, and in the, redox react, or the re reduction 2.0, I've got eight. So if I subtract four from eight, I get four. I'm left with four waters. 
there's eight electrons here, eight electrons there. Your electrons should always cancel, 100%. You should not have any electrons left over. And then finally, we've got 10 hydrogen here and 16 down here. So 10 from 16 is six and everything else is okay. So I gotta put all of this together, starting with ox uh, oxidation. So I've got H2S, that's the only thing left on the reactant side, so that's done. Plus, what have I got left here in my reduction? I've got six hydrogen and eight nitrate. Okay, that's everything on the left-hand side for both equations. Go back up to my oxidation. I've got sulfate, SO4, everything else here is cut, cut, cut. And then down here, I've got eight nitrogen dioxide and four water. All right, that's not the end because this equation does not look like this equation. So the last thing you have to do is you have to put these back together. You've got to put HNO3 and H2SO4 back together. So how do we do that? Okay, let me... I think I have enough room. Let's go for it. I'll use yellow again so you can see it. All right, so I'm looking at the left-hand side and I see H2S is okay, so that's fine. I'm gonna put up here a big fat one. And I'm gonna cross that out because it's already balanced up at the top. Next thing we have to put together is HNO3. Let me try to clean this up a little bit. There we go. Get that in. Bear with me for a sec. Okay, so we've got one. All right, the next thing we have to put together is nitric acid, HNO3. So I look down at what I've got left. What I have left is six hydrogen and eight nitrate. I can't put those together because I'm going to be left with two nitrate ions, right? I can put those two together and I can make six HNO3 but then I'd be left with two nitrate. And that doesn't make sense. What I can do is I can add, I can add two more hydrogen ions so that I can make a total of eight, hydro, uh, eight nitric acids as long as I add two hydrogens to both sides of the equation, okay? So I'm gonna add two more hydrogens here, and I'm gonna add two hydrogens over here so that I'm basically treating both sides the same. So now these can all come together to form, up at the top, eight nitric acid molecules. So now these are all used up, okay? Here's where another checkpoint comes, because what you add to the right-hand side should work out perfectly with what you need to make up here and right now that's sulfuric acid so down here i've got one sulfate and i need to make h2so4 guess what i just added two hydrogen ions so those two hydrogen ions combine with this sulfate ion to make one h2so4 so i've used those two up and then we've already balanced these two we've got eight no2 and four h2o Ta -da! And that's how you balance uh, an acidic redox reaction.